What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week and we are back with another Unreal Engine 5 early access audio tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at setting up a dynamic footstep system using meta sounds. Now dynamic footstep system is something that I've set up in the past. It was about two years ago uh, we had set that up in four point, I believe it was two three using sound cues. But since meta sounds are meant to completely replace sound cues, I thought why not revisit and take a look using those meta sounds. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you will find a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So this tutorial is going to be fairly similar to the, the original one that I had done, but there are going to be some differences. Uh, but basically, I've got just a, a testing format set up here, and we've got three different materials. We've got our concrete, we've got grass, and we've got mud, which is actually concrete grime, but it looks like mud, and it's the closest thing that I had in the starter content. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up a physical surface type for these materials. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to edit. We're gonna go under our project settings. And on the left here, under engine, if we scroll down and go to physics, and then scroll down this list, eventually you're gonna come to a section called physical surface. And you can have up to 62 different physical surfaces within your project. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and name these. So for the first one, uh, we're gonna do concrete, and then we're gonna do grass, and then mud. And then you can close this window. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our actual physical materials. So what we're going to do is inside our content browser, uh, we're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to go under physics and we're going to set up a physical material. Select physical material, select, and we're going to name this concrete. And if we double click on this, it'll open up. Uh, if your details panel doesn't open um, and it looks like this, uh, just go under your window and select details. And with the details panel open uh, under physical properties, which will be down here at the bottom, uh, you'll have a drop down menu. And if we hit this drop down menu, you will see the three materials that we had set up in our project setting. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to concrete and save it. We can close that, and now we just need to do the same thing for our mud and our grass. So again, physical material, select, uh, we'll call this one grass, and select grass, save, close, physics, physical, nope, not physical mask, physical material, and we'll call this mud, double click, default to mud, save, close. And so now we have our physical materials set up. We now just need to tie them to the materials that I have already on the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way here for a second. Just go ahead and click on them. And then under our, our details panel, You'll see the material. So if we double click on this, it'll bring up that material. And over here on the left, you'll see that it has a section for physical material. So now that we've set up those physical materials, since this is concrete, we can go ahead and select concrete, save that. And once it's saved, you can go ahead and close it. And we're just gonna do the same for the grass and the mud. And so now all three of our different surfaces have a physical surface material applied to it. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the player to detect what type of surface that they're standing on. 
And to do that, we're gonna come into our content browser under mannequin animations, and we're gonna go to our animation blueprint. And we wanna be under the event graph. And inside our animation graph, uh, what we're gonna do is just like we did in the first tutorial, we're going to try and get the pawn owner. And we want to get the location. Because what we're gonna do is, again, just like we did in the first tutorial um, for 4.23, we're gonna do a line trace by channel because we're gonna draw a line straight down from our player and it's going to then, we're gonna tell it to detect whatever surface type that line hits. So we're gonna do a line trace by channel and our actor, we're gonna take that location and that's where it's going to start. Now in, the 4.23 tutorial that I had done, we had pulled off here and we did a vector plus a vector. Now either I'm blind or it's been removed, but I can't find it. So if you do know where it is, please let me know in the comments below or if you know what happened to it, uh, let me know. But as a workaround, what we're gonna do is we're going to break this vector. And then we are also going to make a vector. And it's the one under math, vector, make, vector. And so our X and Y, we can keep the same, but to get that line to go straight down, we want to take this Z and we're going to do an add minus 500. Or you can do subtract and put 500. However you get there, we're basically taking a line straight down on the Z axis. And then we're going to move this up to our Z and we are going to put that to our end point. So uh, from here, what we can also do is we're gonna take our pawn owner and we want that to go to our actors to ignore. Now I have done it without adding this and it still works, uh, but just on the off chance um, is kind of a fail safe. We're gonna add it to the actors to ignore just so it doesn't, he's not essentially tripping over his own feet and causing sounds to fire where we don't want them. So from here, our out hit, we are going to go ahead and break the hit result. And if we hit this drop down, um, we're also going to come off of our out hit and we are going to get the surface type. From here, return value, we're gonna add a select node. And because you're pulling off of the get surface type, it already understands that surface type is the type of menu that you're looking for. And you can see here that because we had set all this up in our project settings, you will find them here as well. So what we're gonna do is off our impact point, that's where we want our footstep to be heard. So we're going to play a sound at that location and this return value is going to be that sound. Now we haven't set the sounds up yet. We're getting to that in just a second, um, but we want this line trace to be what triggers that and we'll get to triggering the line trace here in just a moment as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and compile and save our third person animation blueprint. And I'm just gonna drag this off to the side for now. And since we're in our animations, let's go ahead and take a look at our run. 
And we'll go ahead and pause this. Because if you've ever seen any of the footstep tutorials that I've done, uh, you're pretty aware of what we're doing right now. Basically, we're going to scrub through here and we're looking for that impact point where we want this notify to happen. So once we found a relatively good spot for that footstep sound to take place on under our notifies on our one track, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and right click, add notify, new notify, and we're just going to call this footstep. And so what we're going to do then is drag over here to our next footstep, uh, which looks about right there. And we're going to do another add notify, new notify, and we can just call this footstep as well. We can go ahead and save that and close that. That's all we need to do to our run animation. And so with our third person animation blueprint here, uh, if we right click and I just start typing in footstep, you'll see now that we've created that animation notifies event, uh, we do have that trigger available to us now. And that is what's gonna cause us to trigger this line trace by channel. So if we go ahead and compile this, save it, uh, we're gonna move that back out of the way. And I'm going to move this out of the way. Actually, before I do that, uh, in our line trace by channel, just so we can see uh, that line happening under our draw debug type, uh, let's just go ahead and put for duration. Because now, if we hit play, we'll be able to see that line. And that is the line trace by channel. And the little red square at the end that is where it is impacting the ground. So now what we need to do is we need to set up our meta sounds so that we have our footsteps to play at the location. So I've got some footsteps imported here and I called these cement, even though I called the actual material concrete, but it's whatever, you can name them whatever you want. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create three different meta sounds just like we created three different sound cues uh, or multiple sound cues in the original tutorial. And so we're gonna call this concrete. I'm gonna create another one called grass. And then I'm gonna create another one called mud. So if we open up one of our uh, meta sounds here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're going to add a wave player. And the footstep sounds that I have are stereo, uh, but typically you want footsteps to be mono. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a mixer here and just gonna go ahead and essentially sum the left and right channels down to a mono source. Off of our wave asset, we want to get a random array. And then off of our array, we want to promote to a graph input. And under our values here, which let me turn off my camera so that you can actually see what's happening over here. Uh, we're going to add four different ones. Uh, you can add however many footstep sounds you have. I have four. Uh, so since this is our concrete, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I called it cement. So cement one, cement two, cement three, and cement four. So that is our array. It's going to be randomly pulling from one of those assets. And we're gonna take our input. That is going to go to the next, and then on next, it is going to go ahead and play. So if we go ahead and just hit this, hit play. You can hear that it's randomly pulling from this array of assets. So we can go ahead and save that and close it. 
And then we're just going to do the same thing for grass and mud. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up and be right back. So now that we've got our meta sound saved, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our third person animation blueprint. And now in our select node, we just have to add those meta sounds. So if we come under concrete, you'll see that your meta sound is listed here and then under grass and then mud. We'll go ahead and compile that and save it and you are finished. So now uh, we've set up our physical surface materials. We've set up our animation notify inside our run animation. We've set up our meta sounds. We've thrown it all together. And now if we hit play, you'll see uh, because we didn't set up a default surface, there's no footsteps that happen here. But then as we run onto each of these surface types, you'll hear that it's detecting the surface type and it's pulling from that select node and playing the appropriate meta sound. All right guys, so that is gonna wrap things up for this video. Like I said, a lot of it was very similar to the 4.23 tutorial that I had put out, but because meta sounds are going to be replacing sound cues in upcoming updates of Unreal Engine 5, I wanted to revisit that and kind of go over how to essentially create that using the new system. If there's anything that you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments below. And again, you're more than welcome to join the Sound Effects Guy Discord server linked in the description. Until next time.